My guest today is Frank Gill. Frank, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. It's good to talk to you for the, it was the first extended conversation we had, although I've seen you many times yes. at SQL Saturdays. Yes, so. very definitely. Um, tell me about SQL Saturday. Uh, SQL Saturday is an a offshoot of the PASS organization, which mm -hmm. is the Professional Association for SQL Server. Uh, my Got shirt. your colors on. Um, and there are SQL Saturdays around the world every, pretty much every Saturday. Okay. Um, if you go to SQLSaturday.com, you can get a list of them. And they are one-day conferences. They run from generally around 8.30 to 5. And they'll have somewhere between 4 and 8 to 10 tracks with sessions every hour to 75 minutes on all manner of SQL Server subjects. And yeah. it's all volunteer. Um, both the people who run the events and the people who speak at the events are all volunteers, and it's just kind of one of the indications of how strong and powerful the SQL community can be. It is. They, in fact, those things run like clockwork now, yeah. I think because there are so many of them. Yes. And I keep getting emails that say, call for speakers in yes. Prague or yes. Sri Lanka, and I keep thinking, I wish I could go to all these yeah. SQL senators. I think they've hit every continent except Antarctica at this point. So, so. far. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see when we get down there. And, you, and of course, you are a SQL Server guy. Yes. That's what you do. Yep. Yeah, I've been doing it for 13 years now. Yeah, that's right. It's weird to think about. <laughs> um, what's, what's exciting in the SQL world these days? So um, one of the things that I'm really interested in, you know, a lot of, there's a big push for Microsoft to move to Azure. And one of the challenges in moving to Azure, moving SQL Server to Azure, is if you think about Azure, there are kind of two big benefits. One is the fact that you have the ability to scale things up and down. Mm -hmm. And the second is the fact that it is a managed service. Um, the challenge prior to managed instance so is managed that, service, define that. Uh, the fact that you can stand something up in Azure and the infrastructure is fully managed. So it's so, not my headache anymore, it's right. Microsoft's headache. Exactly. So the problem with SQL Server prior to managed instances release is that you have two options for running SQL Server in Azure. One was um, to stand Azure up on, or sorry, stand SQL Server up on an Azure VM. Okay, so and you're kind of losing that managed right. service. Right, so idea. you're responsible for OS patching, SQL Server patching, storage, you know, maintenance, all of that stuff. Um, the other option was Azure SQL Database. And the challenge there is that the feature set was limited um, to the point where moving an existing application, an existing database environment, to managed or to Azure SQL Database was prohibitive. Uh, the two big blockers are the fact that you could only run a single database. Mm -hmm. So if you have an instance of SQL Server running multiple databases and you've got cross database communication mm -hmm. or linked servers talking between instances, you can't do that in Azure SQL Database. The second blocker is there's no SQL Server agent in Azure SQL Database. So if you're using agent jobs to run business logic or execute SSIS packages, you can't do that. Hmm. And so that's where managed instance comes in. It basically bridges the gap between the two. Okay. Um, you have 99.9% .9 of the feature set of SQL Server. There are a couple of T-SQL differences, and there are a couple of things that are currently not available, but they're working on making available. Mm, okay. And then everything is managed from the infrastructure perspective. You move your databases up there, and that's all you need to worry about. Your backups are managed. Um, all of the patching, all of your you know, SQL patching, Windows patching, that is all handled. And it just gives the ability for people to do um, a lift and shift migration into okay. Azure. Um, and it is something that Microsoft is looking at with 2008 going end of life on July 9th of this year. Um, it is sort of the avenue that Microsoft is looking at for people to get their stuff into Azure quickly. And they're motivating people in that if you take a 2008 workload and move it to Azure, um, you will get three years of security support for free. That extended support oh, that, that you would have to pay for hmm. um, if you were to maintain those instances you know, on-prem, move them to managed instance, and you're set. And it's true, uh, SQL database and moving to a VM as well, but you know, managed instance does give you that additional positive of um, 
you know, getting things managed. Well, that um, challenge, one of the challenges would be that um, in that scenario, you would no longer be on SQL 2008. You'd now be on SQL 2018 or whatever, whatever the well, most recent version so is. So that and now and now there's obviously uh, incompatibilities. Things you have to change for that. So the the way that they're having, the way I was instructed to think about it at Summit last year mm -hmm. is no longer think about version. Think about compatibility level. Okay. Because when you're running in Azure, if you're running in Azure SQL database or you're running managed instance you are running the latest version of the code. Right. You know, they're pushing updates to Azure before they're pushing them to the box product. So by setting compatibility level, you can make sure that you're hitting the feature set that you're expecting to hit. Oh, interesting. And that's so true. So you could set that to the compatibility level that was yes, true 10 years ago. 100 or 105, I think. I think 105 is okay. 2008 R2. Interesting. Um, so that is, the way that they are moving, the way Microsoft is moving with SQL Server to make it compatibility level, you know, rather than version. And um, it gives you the ability to, you know, figure out what you're going to do with 2008. You know, if you want to re, um, you know, re-architect your applications or change your applications so they'll be compatible with a newer version of SQL Server mm -hmm. or, you know, migrate that stuff to another managed instance or, you know, it just gives you that that three-year window gives right. you some additional leeway. Okay, so you could lift and shift today, right. set the old compatibility, and then as time moves on, mm -hmm. move that compatibility forward yes. and update your application to match yep. that. Yeah, and I mean, the, the new version, I mean, if you're running 2008, you're running a version that obviously works. I mean, it's, it was a rock-solid product, and it still is in a lot of ways, but there are just a tremendous number of features that you can take advantage of moving forward from there. Um, you know, availability groups being one of them. Um, managed instance, there are two different levels. Um, there are two different tiers, I should say. There's general purpose, which I think of as kind of being analogous to standard edition. And then there's business critical, which is analogous to Enterprise Edition. Okay, and these are decisions you make when you set up your managed right. instance and, and it's priced accordingly. I yes, imagine. yeah, so you're you're paying for the additional features. Um, one of the major features of Ego Business Critical is it um, has high availability baked in. So effectively, when you stand up a business critical managed instance, behind the scenes, it's building a four-node cluster mm. and it is running, the, the documentation says availability group like functionality. Mm -hmm. So effectively you are pushing log records from your primary to these secondaries. And with business critical, you have one readable secondary. So if you want to offload reporting mm -hmm. or other activity to that readable secondary, you can. And then if you want to pay for it, you can get additional redundancy. Um, all of that, that cluster is all within a region you have the ability to stand up an additional managed instance and replicate things to a different region. Okay. Um, but that is an additional cost. But I think it's a really, um, you know, it was really exciting when it came out just because that was one of the major blockers to people trying to move existing um, stuff to Azure. Is Either they weren't going to get the management or if they did get the management, they were going to have to effectively rewrite their applications because, you know, they'd written it for SQL Server as we know and love it, and managed instance. Well, let's gives talk you about that. who this uh, this product is for and who it's not for, um, because Azure SQL Database has been out there for a long time. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, there was a an Azure server or a SQL service in the very first right, like, right off the bat, uh -huh. um, and uh, if I'm if I'm running that and it's working fine, uh -huh. and I'm not using agents and I don't have any cross database. Right. Communication. Is there any mo reason that I should think about managed no. instances? No, I mean, Azure, they're, they're quite a bit more expensive, I think. Yes, they are. And Azure SQL Database definitely has its place. You know, one of the major um, use cases for it is if you have a multi tenant application. Mm -hmm. So you have an application, and each one of your clients or tenants needs their own schema, their own version of the database. Okay. You can build that out, you can create an ARM template, you can, and just replicate that as many times as you want. Um, and then, you know, any sort of new web application that you're developing or application that's being developed in Azure, if you 
can make Azure SQL Database work for you, you know, that makes perfect sense. Okay. What managed instance is really there for is clients who have an existing um, environment, you know, an instance of SQL Server or instances of SQL Server that they have built out and they have been running according to sort of a traditional SQL model where I've got multiple databases, there's communication going on between them, mm -hmm. um, and then those agent jobs are running to do, you know, run business logic, to run SSIS packages. Um, you can take that and move that wholesale into managed instance with very little tweaking. Um, and it, it just, it will run. Um, you know, and as you said, it is more expensive. You know, if you want to test these things out, it helps to have a company that will pay for it. <laughs> that always um, helps have a company and, pay for it. <laughs> you know, I, I definitely have it set up where I can spin it up and tear it down. Uh -huh. um, there are some free trial yes. versions of Azure, but yes. uh, they're limited by the number of dollars you have. So Yes, and it, it is expensive. And if you look at the, you know, as you get into the higher tiers, um, it can be, you know, to my mind, it is extremely expensive, um, but you have to keep in mind that you are not, you're paying for the maintenance of that infrastructure, sure. and you also have the ability to scale it up and down, just like everything else in Azure. Um, you know, I was just talking to a client today, and they are looking at it as a possible solution to start moving things to, and their business, you know, they, they have a server that has 16 cores, and because they ran into some issues with performance, they threw memory at it. So they got 16 cores and I believe 768 gig of memory. That seems like a lot. Yes, <laughs> and they said we're pushing that at about 5% during the majority of their year. They have a year-end process that runs that um, oh, that's maxes, a long premises. Yes. Oh, it sounds so, like a great candidate for the cloud. Right, so that maxes out. And so what they're looking at doing is, you know, segmenting things, splitting things out by client and potentially standing up multiple managed instances. And then they'll be able to run at, you know, the a low level Most for of the majority the of the year. And then and those times when it's really yes, high, just and then uh, crank it up. And um, they're going to pay more, but they're going to be using those resources. I think that's, that's fair. I think peop most companies, they care less about expense than they do about the, the value they get, the expense mm -hmm. relative to the value they're going to get from That's really right. the key. Yeah, and another thing to talk about just in terms of kind of the pricing is um, Microsoft has got a program called hybrid licensing. So if you have purchased core licenses for your on-prem mm. and you migrate those to managed instance, you can push those licenses or use those licenses. Well, um, that reduces the hourly cost right. of the service. And it reduces it. If you're dealing with business critical, um, you can also... Uh, commit and it's true of general purpose as well. You can commit to a certain amount of time, so you can say I, I am committing for a year or I'm committing for three years. And if you commit for three years and you have hybrid licensing, it reduces your cost by eighty percent. Oh my gosh! So that wow. yeah. So I think the if you push it, the biggest machine you can get has sixty four cores and I think three hundred and eighty four gig of memory. Um, if you pay for that by month, you know, if you pay for that by the hour, the estimated cost for a month is about 40 grand. The three year hybrid license uh, deal, it's $8,000. That's significant. So, yes, very, very significant difference. And so there are a lot of options out there. Um, it's not, you know, if you want to stand something up and play with it, Azure SQL Database or Azure running on a VM makes a lot more sense. But if you are a, you know, enterprise that is looking to move stuff to, um, to the cloud, the managed instance makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, what it's going to look like ten years down the road is a different question. But um, you know, I think we're going to see things start to change as we get into you know running SQL Server on containers, and there are yeah. a lot of different. There's a lot of stuff going on now that makes it a really exciting time to do. What it's I an do. interesting mix because the databases, of course, themselves are very mature. They've mm -hmm. been around for so long. Relational databases have been around a long time. Yes. And uh, now the cloud is starting to mature, and mm -hmm. these are converging. Uh, that, that's where a lot of the innovation comes. Uh, where, where can people learn more about this? Uh, so 
from Microsoft. If you do a search for Azure Managed Instance, there is a lot of really great information out yeah. there about um, you know the functionality. You know, there, there's some great resources about standing one up if you do want to test it out. Um, it's now a fairly straightforward process. Mm -hmm. When it was originally, um, you know, released in preview, uh, you had to jump through a lot of hoops in terms of networking. You had to build out a VNet and you had to build out a subnet with uh, routing lists, and that's now all configured for you in mm -hmm. the wizard if you go through uh, the portal. Um, so you can find information about that. There's a lot of really good information about the technology behind it. You know, I talked about high availability with Business Critical. There's some great information about how that works, how you, um, and how you can access that readable secondary, and then the pricing stuff. You know, they've got it broken out by region. Um, it's not available in all regions, but it's available um, in every. I don't know how they describe it. So, like in the U.S., you can get it. West, Central, East. Mm -hmm. You just may not be able to get it in East US two versus East US. Got it. Um, so that that information is all out there. So there's um, a lot to learn, and like I said, I expect to be really busy with this. Uh -huh. um, kind of talking to my first client today, and then there's a lot of stuff coming in the pipeline. Very cool. As that end do of life date comes. Do you have a, an online presence? I do. Um, Share with us. I blog at ScreebyDBA.com. You have to write that down for me. We'll put uh, it across the yes, screen here. <laughs> yeah, and um, I'm on Twitter at ScreebyDBA. So, uh, I'll I, follow you today. Yeah, and I you know, work, if you're familiar with the SQL help hashtag, I try to monitor that. Okay. It's a hashtag. You can put questions out there, and people like Alan Hurt, Paul Randall, Kimberly Tripp, Aaron Stilato. I know those guys. Yeah. Smart people on that list. Very definitely, <laughs> and they will they will reply. If you ask something they know about, um, they will reply. I've had conversations with Alan Hurt that have spanned a number of hours, and at the end of four hours or so, he'll come back and say, okay, we can continue this, but I'm going to have to bill you $400 an hour. <laughs> so and you just got $400 uh, like yeah. dollars worth of exactly. free consulting. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Frank, thanks so much. You are very welcome. It's a lot of fun. If you work with SQL Server in any capacity, go to pass.org and learn how you can learn more about database technology and make some friends.